Let's find out what's going on with the most recent subvariant of Omicron, BA5. It's now the most dominant strain. It's the most contagious subvariant so far. I'm Dr. Mike Hansen, and in my last two videos, I talked about my experience of getting COVID, BA5, about six weeks ago, and I also detailed the BA5's ability to evade our immune system, either immunity from vaccines or immunity from previous infection or both, the hybrid immunity. I also talked a lot about the timing of that immunity and how that matters. The longer it's been since your previous shot or previous infection, the less robust that immunity. One of the big questions about BA5 is, does this variant cause more severe disease? And so far it's been very hard to know because it's still very early in the course of its spread. Hospital missions are now rising with BA5 after several months of stable hospitalization rates. You have all these different categories that people are falling into. You have unvaccinated, you have people who've received the vaccine, you have people who received the boosters as well on top of the vaccine, then you have people who've had previous infections, then you've had hybrid immunity where people have had previous infection or previous infections, plus the boosters, plus the vaccines. So trying to sort out all these different groups in these studies is becoming trickier and trickier. In the United States, more than one fifth of the population remains unvaccinated. To make matters even more complicated, it's getting trickier to know the actual number of cases because most of the diagnoses are coming from rapid antigen tests at home. So actual number of cases that's going on is becoming harder and harder to detect. So the best way to answer the question of, does it cause more severe disease, is to go by, is it causing more ICU admissions and deaths? But the problem with that is that there's a lag time from the current wave of spread, and then you have the initial symptoms to the time that people end up going to the ICU and or dying. So that lag time makes it harder to answer that question. There's two big reasons as to why BA5 is so concerning. One is that it's the most transmissible, the most contagious subvariant yet. And then the other is it has properties of Delta specifically the properties of Delta that allow it to get to get inside to the lungs. So when you couple those two reasons together, it makes for a big concern that this could lead to many, many ICU admissions and possibly deaths. As BA4 and BA5 subvariants are becoming a larger proportion of the virus that's circulating, cases and hospitalization numbers are rising. And over the last two weeks, ICU admissions have rose 20%. The thing with BA5 is that it has key mutations in its spike protein and our antibodies that are generated from previous immunity, whether that's from vaccines or infection, our antibodies bind there to block the virus from getting into our cells. So if it now has these mutations that doesn't allow the antibodies to bind, that's gonna be a problem. In this recently published report in New England Journal of Medicine in this month of July, it suggested that in vaccine boosted people, levels of protective antibodies were three times less active against BA5 compared to the first Omicron subvariants, BA1 and BA2. Of course, antibodies don't tell the full picture of the immune system. So there's also the T cells that play a big part in that as well. But the antibodies are the most practical way of measuring immunity. And the thing with BA4 and BA5 is that researching is showing that Omicron infections don't help the immune system effectively to recognize and protect against the subsequent Omicron infections. So in other words, if you've had Omicron, you're most likely not gonna have protection against BA4 or BA5. BA5 case rates in South Africa grew more quickly than did case rates of the Omicron variant that preceded it. With that said, vaccines, although not 100%, do offer good protection against severe disease from BA5. And it still remains to be seen if monoclonal antibodies would be effective against BA5. Oh, and something that I forgot to mention before is that when people are admitted to the hospital, they get screened for COVID. So if they come in with a heart attack, they still get screened for COVID. If they happen to test positive for COVID, that counts as a COVID admission. So people can be admitted with COVID, but not be admitted for COVID. So that's gonna mess with the numbers. That's another reason why it's better to go with ICU admission rates and deaths as opposed to just simply hospitalizations. So as of right now, ICU admissions are slightly going up, but it's not a surge like it was with previous waves as of right now. So based on that and based on my speculation, I think, I think that BA4, BA5, it causes more severe disease compared with Omicron but not nearly as bad as Delta. In my personal experience, when I had COVID six weeks ago, I'm triple vax, otherwise healthy, and I was sick for about two weeks. I personally have a friend who is not vaccinated. He's not had any previous COVID infections, and he developed COVID about two weeks ago, and he's now starting to feel back to his normal self. Still not 100% though. So he's had about a two week course of illness. In both my case and in his case, we both had this cough, and that seems to be a common thing with BA4, BA5 is this cough with lots of phlegm, runny nose, lots of congestion, but also sore throat. 
Sore throat definitely more common with this one compared to previous subvariants. And then people have concern about long COVID. There's a recent publication in The Lancet that suggested that about 5% of vaccinated people infected with Omicron variants developed long COVID symptoms. And then you compare that with 11% of the Delta variant. Let's take a look at South Africa where BA5 already peaked. There, it began to rise in late March and now it comprises about half of all COVID variants in that country. The rest are mostly BA4. Now during this wave, neither cases or hospitalizations rose anywhere near as high as they were during the country's first Omicron surge during the winter. Preliminary reports there suggest that severe illness during the more recent surge was not higher than the risk during the first Omicron surge involving BA1. Now on the flip side, if you take a look at Portugal, they did have a surge of cases that was correlated with rising proportion of BA5 starting in early May and they had hospitalizations in Portugal that were much closer to the levels that were reached during the nation's first Omicron wave. And its death rate was about three to 10 times higher compared to South Africa's over the past few months. So why this discrepancy? Well, it might be related to the difference in ages of their residents. The median age of Portugal, 45, South Africa, 28. So this table right here is showing the lineage of mutations that have been identified in Omicron BA1, BA2, and then you have BA4, BA5 down here. BA4 and BA5 have identical sequences of the spike protein and therefore have been grouped together. Now down here, we're looking at neutralizing antibody titers, looking at before and after the booster. And in this panel right here, we're again looking at neutralizing antibody titers in people who've been infected by original strain here, and then Omicron, BA1, and then here's people who've been infected with BA4, BA5. Also, these people were vaccinated except for one. These are the demographics of the participants in the study. The data shows that BA4, BA5 subvariants substantially escape neutralizing antibodies induced by both vaccination and infection. So in conclusion, the studies are coming in. It's still very complicated, but it seems like BA4, BA5 causes more severe disease compared with Omicron, but not quite as bad as Delta.